Lay that dead relationship aside. Lay that lost job aside. Lay that lost connection aside. Lay that lost friendship aside. Lay that lay it aside. It was relevant. Sometimes ago, it's no more relevant. It's gone. Move on. Look at what it says. Say, fill your own with oil and go. There is no movement if you are not filled. How Jesus of Nazareth was anointed with the Holy Spirit and power and he moved. There is no movement of faith if you are not filled. How Jesus of Nazareth was anointed with the Holy Spirit and power and then he moved about doing good. in excess or in dissipation. He said, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. The Spirit is a spirit of a new thing. If there is old you or old things that are holding you back and blah, 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 the Holy Spirit will come into your life and start doing new things. The things that God has destined you to become is the Spirit that can start it in your life. So every day you are out there, Miko Shaka Barado Shekiria. You wake up in the morning. You are not thinking about those dead matters. You pray in the Holy Ghost. Lekuba Karaba Koturia. You worship in the Spirit. Let me tell you if you have money, you will not be grateful to God. And that is the truth. If you have money, you will never, you will always be, you know, you'll be regretting and then be offended. My friend, stop all that and face your faults. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. In the school of purpose, you are not a failure. Even if you have some setbacks, is to push you forward, is to promote you forward. Setbacks are meant to set you up for future blessings, for future promotions. That is the way it is. He said to give you a future and a hope. So the message of purpose is a message that takes you into the exact will of God, into the heart, the very heart of God. to the Colossians. He said, you are complete in it. You need no extra thing. God already saw us completed. Bible says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. He has finished our faith. He has authored it. He has finished it. The life we are living right now, already wrote it as a script, acted it, and he now took us to come and start living the life with him.
be drunk in wine when there's in excess or in dissipation. He said, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. He came for solution. He didn't come to condemn. He came to save. If God tells you be fruitful, what he's saying is that he has wired you to be fruitful. As a believer, you must be making things happen. You must be talking to God to solve the problems on the earth. Purpose is discovered, it is not determined. You will start whining and dining with the kings because you have what it takes to offer. You have solutions and answers to their questions. Glory to God. Right now, I want you to lift up your hands to Jesus, praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Bada gada ba. Yehanda banama sahara ba. Come on, lift up your voice to Jesus at this moment. Rahande de balamano sihande gosa. Hallelujah. Lord, we love you and we exalt you. You are worthy of our praise. Glory to Jesus. You are here. Moving in our midst, we worship you. We worship you. You are here. You are working in this place. We worship you. We worship you. Oh. Way make miracle walk, promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Hey. Way make miracle walk, promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Come on, sing with me. Our hands to you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. You are here. Working in this place. You are working in this place. We worship you. We joy in the heart. We call you. Promise, keep. 
to worship the name of the Lord. Let's give him all the glory. Give him all adoration. Praise him in understanding. Praise him in tongues. If you cannot pray in tongues, just give thanks to God. Thank him for everything he has done. Give him all the glory. Give him all adoration. He is worthy to be praised. Is awesome, is glorious. The book of Psalm 28, verse 7 says, The Lord is my strength and my shield. In him, in my, in my heart, trust, and I am helped. And by heart exalts, and with my song, I will give thanks to him. I want you to just give God all the glory. You can sing a song and thank him. Father, Lord, I give you all the praises. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Father, for feeding, clothing, shelter. Thank you for the gift of life. Just bless God. Bless God in understanding. Bless him in tongues. Praise him. Give him all the glory. He is worthy to be praised. He is the almighty. He is the God of gods. He is the Lord of lords. He had kept you. He is keeping you and he will keep you forever. Bless his holy name. Thank him for everything. Be specific. Mention things he has done. Thank him for everything. Bless his holy name. He is worthy to be praised. He is awesome. He is glorious. Father, Lord, we worship you. We bless your holy name. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless his holy name. Give him all the praises. The book of Psalm 50, verse 14 says, Offer to God the sacrifice of thanksgiving 
and perform your vows to the Most High. Do I have people here? Perform your vows. Lift up. Speak. Shout unto him. Give him all the glories. Jesus, I glorify your holy name. I am grateful for all you have done. I am grateful for all you are doing. I bless you beyond my needs. I bless you beyond my wants. I bless you for the gift of life. Oh, it's a brand new day. It's another time in your presence. Glory be to your holy name. Leander Lebokosha. Ndekizwa. Ze etelina makunde lebaradasha. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Father, we worship you. Father, we bless your holy name. You are the Lord of Lords. You are the ancient of days. You are the I am that I am. Come on, give him all the glory. Woohoo! He's awesome. He's glorious. He's mighty. You are holy in all. Thank you, Jesus. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4. I always thank my God for you because of his grace given you in Christ Jesus. There is a grace that is given unto us. Give him all the praises. Colossians chapter 4, verse 2 says, Devote yourselves to prayer being watchful and thankful. So I want you to devote this morning yourself to thanksgiving, thanking God for everything. Be a blessing by saying, Lord, I am grateful. I am grateful for this. I am grateful for that. I am grateful for everything. Give a shout of joy to God. Father, we worship you. Glory, hallelujah. Father, we bless your holy name this morning. You are awesome. You are glorious. You are mighty. You are holy in all. Ili nikosi paradia. Te kosha mandeke tosi. E tambelina nuzu priandalia nanosa. Le araba shande kandelina nuzu priandesha. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to your holy name. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Now we are going to take the confession of faith. Father God, God, we thank you for all that you have been and done for us. Thank you for all that we have been through individually and as a spiritual family. Thank you, God, for all the blessings, situations, challenges, relationships, and all. Glory to God. We have received God's mercy, compassion, and grace into our lives. We are God's righteousness in Christ Jesus. We are Christ-like in thoughts, character, and actions. We are super intelligent, super excellent, and full of God's glory. All demonic shackles and bondages are broken. We are liberated from negative notions, addictions, and bad habits and all kinds of weaknesses. We are supernaturally strengthened, fortified, full of the spirit of love, might, power, wisdom, grace, faith, excellence, and truth in Jesus' name. We have received God's requisite knowledge, deeper understanding, and we are prayed divine wisdom and we are successful in our businesses, careers, studies, relationships, marriages, health, finances, properties, families, church, ministry, and all. We are supernaturally healed and healthy, settled with wonderful friendships, relationships, and marital bliss, experiencing financial provisions massively impacting lives via our ministry, fulfilling and helping others to fulfill God's giving purposes in Jesus' name. And he just said, Amen. amen. Communion Christian Center, Life Center Ministries, has sporadically increased in membership, insights, influence, impact, and in physical material, financial, and human resources to fulfill our mandate, saving, and blessing generations. In Jesus' name, we have supernaturally opened Communion Christian Center, Life Channel Ministries, in all commercial and capital cities and countries of the world by the power and wisdom of the Holy Spirit. We signs and wonders 
via God-fearing, trusted, reliable, humble, resourceful, broken, skillful, intelligent, spiritual, submissive, graceful, communion Christian center, life channel ministry, vision-driven sons and daughters, many lives, orphans, prisoners, poor, less privileged, sicklers, disabled, broken-hearted, and others are touched and taken care of by the rest of us. We have started building and repairing ruined cities and countries' economies, health, education, infrastructures, families, and so on. Because we are men and women that hear, see, and perceive what God is saying in Jesus' name. Therefore, therefore, we are comforted, anointed, offense-free, peaceful, love workers, holy, and full of joy, unspeakable, in Jesus' name. Full of joy, unspeakable, in Jesus' name. Come and rejoice. Glory to God. Our families, organizations, communities, cities, and nation, Nigeria, are blessed, peaceful, and full of God's knowledge. Kings, politicians, and public officers are saved and God-fearing. The body of Christ is on fire for Christ. All other churches and ministries with their ministers are blessed, multiplying, and fulfilling their God-given mandate in Jesus' name. I, Temitokwe Awobisayo, specifically declare that in this season and in 2020, does declare, does declare, that the eyes of your understanding are enlightened, they are full of the spirit of grace, that your path is guided and shines brighter and brighter to the perfect day. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. It is our season of dominion. It's my season of dominion. We leap onto the next level of greatness and exploit. We are in charge of life and its events, taking over places and winning souls massively for Christ. In Jesus' name. Thank God for answers. Glory to God. Come on, rejoice and give him praise. Stay tuned. We'll continue shortly. That's why Paul wrote to the Colossians. He said, you are complete in it. You need no extra thing. God already saw us completed. Bible says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. He has finished our faith. He has authored it. He has finished it. The life we are living right now, already wrote it as a script, acted it, and it now took us to come and start living the life with him. Yield ourselves to you in the name of Jesus Christ. We yield ourselves to you. We submit to you. We submit to your thoughts. We submit to your will. The thoughts you have towards us, they are thought of peace, they are thought of prosperity, thought of rest, and thought of good and not of evil, to give us a future and a hope. Well, thank you, Jesus, because this understanding is clear to us. You help us to make decisions based on these teachings and understanding. Thank you, everlasting Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Last Sunday, I began it, a series which I titled God's Purpose and Plans for You. And so last Sunday, I taught on God's God of purpose and plans. That's part one. God of purpose, uh, God's purpose and plan for you, GPPY, G, G, part one, God of purpose and plans. And now today, I want to be taking GPPY, part two, which I've titled God's purpose in the epistles. All right? Um, it's good for us to see things in the light of the New Testament. You know, we are New Testament believers. 
we are not Old Testament believers. The reason why we are New Testament believers is because we've been saved, redeemed by the blood of Jesus. We are product of the finished work of grace. We have received abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, and we ought to be reigning with Christ. And I believe we are reigning with Christ in the name of Jesus Christ. We are New Testament believers. We're not saved by the blood of goats or bulls. We are saved by the blood of Jesus. So we are New Testament believers, so we ought to look at the whole entire, the whole entire, entire scripture with the lens of, the, of Christ, with the lens, see the old, the old scripture with the understanding of the New Testament. We believe in the old scripture, all right? We believe in the old scripture. In Jeremiah 29, verse 11, he said, I know the thought of that I think towards you. So we believe that. All right? In Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5, he called Jeremiah. He said, I ordained you as a prophet to nation. We believe that scripture. We believe what God used Moses to prophesy. We believe what God started with Abraham that God consummated by sending Jesus to come and die for us. Without the Old Testament, there wouldn't have been New Testament. All right? And so being um, believers of the New Testament, we need to actually learn from the Old Scripture. And God's Spirit is breathing, breathing on the Old Scripture, you know, to bring out revelations of the will that he has for us. All right? Um, and the New, um, in, the, in the Scripture, from the Scripture. But you see, we ought to see things, all right, with the eyes of the New Testament. The Bible, you know, I like what some people say. They say, Old Testament is Christ concealed and New Testament is Christ revealed. And it's true. Everything in the Old was pointing to Christ. Prophecy, promises, everything was pointing to Christ. And that um, is very important for us to take note, okay? So we have to see things with the eyes or with the lens of the Spirit of Christ. All right? So now I want to, to go into certain part of the scripture concerning God being the God of purpose in the epistles. All right? Now, let me, let me first, um, you know, start with Romans chapter, Roman chapter um, 9. Romans chapter 9. I want to uh, quickly do justice to that. Romans chapter 9. Um, I'm reading, okay, I'm reading from verse, um, let me read from verse 6, he said, but it is not that the word of God has taken no effect. Um, it was talking about how Israelites rejected Christ. He said, for they are not all Israel who are of Israel. So that means you can be an Israelite by the flesh, but you are not really a true Israelite uh, because you are not identified with Christ by the Spirit. Nor are they all children because they are, they are the seed of Abraham. But in Isaac your seed shall be called. That is, those who are the children of flesh, of the flesh, these are not the children of God. Can you hear that? But the children of the promise are counted as the seed. The children of the promise are counted as the seed. So you are part of the seed. Jesus is the seed of Abraham. All right? At this time, now look at it. It says, for this is the word of promise. At this time I will come and Sarah shall have a son. And not only this, but when Rebecca also had conceived by one man, even by our father Isaac, for the children not yet been born, nor having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him who calls. And I want you to take note of something. That the purpose of God according to election might stand. So God knew Rebekah was going to conceive. God already planned what was going to happen, planted the seed 
inside Rebecca. Now, I want you to take note. He said, you know, and not only this, but the Rebecca also had conceived by one man, even our father Isaac, for the children not yet being born, nor having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him who calls. Can you see that? So it's God that calls, not of works. It's him that calls. You can't hang God's purpose, all right? You can't decide it. You can't determine it. It was said to her, the older shall serve the younger. And it is written, Jacob I have loved, but Esau I have hated. Now I want you to take note of something here. It's not because God, you know, ate, not like in the word ate, that God ate Esau. All right? Now what God is actually saying, simply put here, is that Jacob I have preferred above Esau. Even though Esau was supposed to be the, um, have the right, you know, of ownership to the bad right, but Jacob, I have preferred. Jacob, I have preferred to Esau because Esau was also blessed. Are you getting what I'm saying? Just like, you know, Isaac was preferred to Ishmael. Ishmael is the child of the bond woman. Isaac is a child of the promised woman of promise. All right? A spirit woman, a blessed woman. Okay, now, you know, see that. And the Bible says that which is born of the flesh is, is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. So the difference between Isaac and Jacob is because according to election and according to purpose, Jacob was to continue the lineage that will eventually bring um, about the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's the lineage that is of the spirit. Now, I want you to get that. That's very important. So, but Bible says, according to the purpose of God. He said that the purpose of God, according to election, might stand. You see that? They didn't do anything to deserve to be preferred. It wasn't Jacob that did something and God preferred him. And I want you to take note of this. There is predestination in this matter. You have a free will to live anyhow. Jacob lied. Jacob was a supplanter. Jacob was a fast guy. Jacob was a smart guy, all right? You know, he swindled and then pretended, he deceived the father, you know, that is Isaac, but he couldn't deceive Jesus Christ. He couldn't deceive God. When God met with him later, God said, what is your name? Just his father asked him, what is your name? He said, I am Esau, all right? But you see, the father even suspected, but then he got away with the blessing. And Esau cried bitterly. You see that? So, but then he couldn't deceive God when he had a counter with God. His life changed. He, you know, his, his, his um, bone, his hip, you know, the, he had a fracture, all right? You know, he had a fracture in, the, in, the, you know, in his hip, all right? And I want you to understand that, that um, uh, like, like around the pelvic guard, we had a fracture there. So Jacob got into brokenness. And God had to bless him. He couldn't lie. He was open to God. So God had to bless him. You know, at that time, he couldn't lie. Because even with the blessing he got from Isaac, he really struggled, struggled. Even though God was still with him, he struggled. But he needed to now move into the supernatural dimension, a super-duper supernatural dimension of God's blessing. So you see that. Now, I want you to take note of something here. Okay, and now Bible says that as it is written, Jacob I have loved, but Esau I have loved less. Let's just put it that way, not ate it. And now verse 14 says, what shall we then say? Or what shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? Certainly not. For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have Compassion. Thank be unto God. He already have mercy on us. Glory to Jesus. So come to the throne of grace that you may obtain mercy. He had had mercy on us. And he's still having mercy on us. Glory to Jesus. Somebody say, I'm a child of mercy. I'm a child of God's mercy. In the name of Jesus. All right? He has compassion on us. He says, so then it is not of him who wills, nor of him who runs, but that doesn't stop us from willing that doesn't stop us from running because he said, write the vision, make it plain, and runs. He said, but of him who shows mercy. So it's mercy that distinguishes Jacob and Esau. 
You are distinguished by mercy in the name of Jesus. For the scripture says to Pharaoh, for this very purpose I have raised you up. For this very purpose. So God had a plan. God had a purpose that when Israelites were going, I needed a king that would resist that move. And that king will have to be punished together with the rest of the Egypt. All right. He said, for this purpose, I have raised you up that I may show my power in you and that my name may be declared in all the earth. Can you see that? Therefore, he has mercy on whom he wills and whom he wills, he hardens. Can you see that? Now, if you read it, then he said, well, you can't question God. He does whatever he likes. But you see, we are on the right side of God. We are in the light. We have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into that of the dear son, Jesus Christ. All right? So his mercy is all over us. His compassion is all over us. But you can see it clearly written here that God is a God of predestination, and God is a God of purpose. Now, let's just go to Romans chapter 8. I want to read Romans chapter 8, you know, quickly. If you, uh, let's check verse 28. We're going to come back to it, but then later in the series, but let's quickly see something. He said, and we know that all things work together for those who love God and those who are called according to his purpose, for whom he foreknew, he also predestined. You know, last Sunday I was talking to you about foreknew. Foreknew means so God had already entered into a relationship with. You know, if Jesus was the Lamb of God that was slain before the foundation of the earth, it means that we are the sheep that were saved. Are you getting what I'm saying? Before the foundation of the earth. For new, it wasn't only Jesus that died before the foundation of the earth. We also got saved. We were chosen in him before the foundation of the earth. I am going to show you briefly. Everything is in this epistle. Now look at it. And now, um, it says that according to his purpose, who accord according to his purpose, for whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. He said that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, this he also called. Whom he called, this he also justified. Whom he justified, this he also Glorified. Now, you see different dimension of God. The glorification is when Jesus comes, all right, and then we enter into glory with him, the fullness of glory with him. But the truth is this, there is also glorification at a level, at a certain level on the earth. That is, when we get things done and the, the old world, Bible says, let the light, let your light shine. You are the light of the world. Let your light shine so that the world may see the goodness of your father and give him the glory. So there is such a thing like the glorification on the earth. Bible says when Jesus Christ was going in John chapter 17, he prayed, he said, the glory you have given unto me, I have given unto them. So we are partakers of heavenly glory on the earth. All right? We don't take what belongs to God as his due glory. All right? We don't, you know, um, accrue it to ourselves. We give him all the glory. But then, let me tell you this, believers are the ones that showcases, or they are the ones that showcase the glory of God on the earth. Are you getting what I'm saying? All right? If somebody is sick right there in your office and you pray for the person and he gets healed, the glory is to the Father. But you see, without you, you are the conveyance of that glory. We had this treasure in 18 verses. Glory to Jesus. All right? In, <laughs> glory to God. Now, see this now. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. He said, predestined, justified, and whom he justified, this he also glorified. All right? But you see, the fulfillment, the fullness of this glorification is when Jesus Christ comes. Glory to God. Now, let me quickly take you to, um, you know, 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 1 to 2. I read it last week where Jesus, where Peter was talking about, you know, according to the foreknowledge. He said, elect according to the foreknowledge of God, the Father, in sanctification of the Spirit for obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace and peace be multiplied unto you. And it's very good for us to know that even then Peter, they understand that it was the purpose of God that before they were born by their earthly parents, God already knew. 
it will be fisher of men. You see that, all right? And that's why Jesus Christ insisted, Peter, do you love me more than this? Feed my lamb. Feed my lamb. Feed the flock. Feed the flock, all right? You could see clearly that the purpose of Peter uh, was that he was going to become one of the pillars of the gospel, all right, and the speaker for God um, in the end time, uh, which he actually did for the first church to be planted and established. So Peter was a, uh, a major force to be reckoned with. Glory to Jesus. Now, I want you to understand something here. In 2 Timothy, I want to read from verse 8. I want to read from verse 8, 2 Timothy. I want to read from verse 8. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord. This is Paul writing to Timothy. Don't be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner. This time he was in prison. But share with me in the sufferings of the gospel according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with holy calling, not according to our works, now, I want you to see your salvation that is not according to your works. You did nothing, actually. Jesus did all the work. But you see, there was a purpose that brought you into salvation. Look at it. He said, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. Can you see that? The purpose is the premise upon which we receive that salvation. The reason why God had to save us is because he put so much in us. He, has, he had a very peculiar reason for him, you know, to, for him to have sent us. There is a special reason. And I want you to take note of that, all right? So he says, you are saved according to his own purpose and grace which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. Do you understand what this means? He said before time began. That means before the world was refurbished, before the earth was refurbished. You see that? Before the earth was created. Before time began. That means before the foundation of the world. You see that? All right? He said, but as now revealed by, but as now revealed, as now been revealed by the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, hallelujah, to which I was appointed a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles. Now, Paul was a preacher, Paul was an apostle, and Paul was a teacher of the Gentiles. Now, he said, it was based on this purpose or the premise of purpose that I was appointed. Now, I want you to get something here. This is very important that there are certain careers you will pursue. There are certain businesses you will pursue because you have understood, all right, what God wants you to do on the earth. Now look at it. In verse 9, he said, look, this calling is not according to our work. It's a holy calling. It is according to his own purpose and his grace. Before time began, so God already decided, and I, this wasn't, your parents had nothing to do with this. Your lineage had nothing to do with this. He said before time began. This was before Adam. God already planned everything before time began. Look at it. So he said, now it has been revealed by the appearing of Jesus Christ. So if Jesus had not appeared, if Jesus had not appeared, I would not have been saved. He referred to Jesus here as the Savior Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. You see that? He brought immortality to light through the gospel, to which I was appointed a preacher. Now, this is where I want you to take note. So it was according to his purpose that we were saved. It was according to his purpose that we are also appointed. So the business you are doing, the reason why you are doing that business, it was because it's according to God's purpose. The reason why you are doing, you are in that career, or that you are doing that job, is according to the purpose. If the purpose says you have to diversify, you have to diversify. If the purpose says you have to get another job, you have to get another job. If the purpose says you should be relieved, you'll be relieved in order to get another job or to get into business. 
Are you getting what I'm saying? The appointment I am sharing with you now, that the appointment is based on the purpose of God. And that is clear. The appointment of Paul is based on the purpose of God. Now, have you ever seen God started something with you or revealing something to your heart? One of the first things he reveals to us is that we ought to be born again. And now, according to his purpose, we are saved. He brought immortality to light. We are born again. Glory to Jesus. We are product of the finished work of Christ. We struggle no more with sin. All right? We are not guilty. We are blessed. We are saved. We are full of the Spirit. Glory to Jesus. Now he said, look, now that you are saved, all right, there is appointment for you in Christ. Like Paul was appointed to be a teacher, to be an apostle, and he was appointed to be a preacher, you too have an appointment in Christ. You know, it reminds me of Mark chapter 3, verse 13 to 15. He said, he went to the mountain, he called to himself the people he wanted, and he chose 12 disciples. And Bible says he, that they might be with him and he might empower them, you know, and Bible says he appointed them. He appointed 12 disciples. There's an appointment for you, all right, with understanding of purpose. There are certain unique things that the Holy Spirit will instruct you to carry out. In some cases, it might not be one thing, but it's according to a particular purpose. Like, for example, in the case of Paul, he was appointed to be a preacher. He was appointed to be an apostle. He was appointed to be a teacher. Did the three things happen at the same time? Most likely. Did he move from being a preacher to being an apostle and a teacher? Most likely. Did he do the two at the same time? Most likely. But one thing is sure that the purpose determines our appointment in Christ. I hope that is clear. Let's move from there to the book of Ephesians. This is lovely. The book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1. I want to read from verse 3. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. Now, you didn't pray for this. He just blessed us. Jesus was the sacrifice for this. And that is why the blessing is in Christ. All right? You've got to be in Christ in order to be qualified for the blessings. All right? When you're in Christ... You are blessed with all spiritual blessings. Now, I am not going to stop there. I'm going to verse 4. Verse 4 says, Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. This is powerful. He chose us in him. You were chosen, not by your parents, not by your family, not by your boss, not by your friends. Bible says he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. You know, he told Timothy, he said, before the time began. Now he's telling the Ephesians, he said, look, he chose us in him. Don't forget, the Bible says you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a peculiar people. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. Peter wrote that. He chose us. Paul also said the same thing. So he chose us in him. Look at it. Before the foundation of the world, there is no doubt about the teaching on predestination. What is predestination? Predestination is just simply the determination of an outcome of or a cause of an event in advance by divine will of God. That is, God already knows the outcome from the beginning. God already knows the end from the beginning. I like what someone said. He said he never begins a thing until he has ended it. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Like, for example, the life you are living right now, God has finished it. An architect has seen the model of the house. He knows the way the house is going to be. But to a passerby or anybody who is working on the video, he never, he will never know the details of the building. The beauty doesn't really know. They see the sand everywhere is rough. They see water. They see gravel. They see planks. They see uh, wood. They see carpenter walking. They see nailing somewhere and then sand everywhere. And it doesn't really look like what the architect already have in mind. He has a model somewhere, and everybody is working to build and build according to the model because there is the big D is already finished in the heart of the architect. 
Look at your, yourself. Say to yourself, say, I am finished in the eyes of God. I am, I am furnished, finished. I am built. I am complete. That's why Paul wrote to the Colossians. He said, you are complete in it. You need no extra thing. God already saw us completed. Bible says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. He has finished our faith. He has authored it. He has finished it. The life we are living right now, already wrote it as a script, acted it, and he now took us to come and start living the life with him. He chose us before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Glory to Jesus. See the reason why he chose us. He said we should be holy. It was his purpose for us to be holy. Without blame. In him. In love. Glory to Jesus. I am holy. I am blessed. I am without blame. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. That's what the Bible says. He said now that you are justified by faith. You have peace with God. We are holy. We are blameless. Regardless of the mistakes you are making. If you can just declare. I am forgiven. I am blessed. I am holy. I am washed by the blood. I am cleansed. I am without guilt. In the name of Jesus. He said because this is the reason why he chose us from the foundation of the world. So when we give our life to Christ physically, all right, in, the, in, in life, all right, we give our life to Christ according to a script that has been written, according to the choice that has been made. You see that? You are struggling to be holy. The Bible says he already chose you to be holy. You are struggling to be blameless. He already chose you to be blameless. Glory to Jesus. Look at verse 5. Say, Having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good player of his will. Glory to God. He already predestined you as sons adopted. Oh, Jesus. This is powerful. You know, Paul was writing to the Romans. He says, we, um, he says um, in Romans, let me just quickly open the place. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, this is, this is lovely, it's this good stuff. Romans chapter 8, if you read verse, um, verse 15, it says, For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom you cry out, Habba Father. Can you see that? We have received the spirit of adoption. So that means this, that, this what happened now, all right, has been predestined. You see? By which we cry, Abba, Father, the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if we are children, we are heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, then we may also be glorified together with him. Glory to Jesus. So he already predestined it. I like what someone said. He said, you see, those who make the manufacturer of the pencil also manufacture eraser. So when Adam fumbled, God already made a remedy. There was already a remedy in place. Glory to Jesus. And I want you to understand that. Look at all the mistakes you are making in your life right, right now. There is a remedy. God already has a plan. God said he already saw you wholly blameless. Alright? He already saw you as an adopted son. Adopted son. You need to know the meaning of adopted son. Adopted son is someone who has been trained and he has been pushed forward for a ceremony. All right? That ceremony is, look, he's no more a slave. He's no more a babe. He's no more someone who doesn't know his right from left. He can transact on my behalf. So you can do certain things on behalf of God. You can declare. You can heal the sick. You can, but you see, you must be aware that you're already chosen before the foundation of the world to be blameless, to be guiltless, to have rest, to have peace. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, I, I still have a lot of things to share with us, but this, this is very fantastic. Now, now um, let me continue to read that Ephesians. So, Bible says that predestined, you know, to be uh, 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 predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. To the praise of the glory of his grace. I love that. I love that. By which he made us accepted in the beloved. 
We are accepted in the beloved. Men may reject you, but there is a group of people called the beloved. It's a spiritual family. The spiritual family of God is the beloved. We are accepted in the beloved. Glory to Jesus. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, um, you know, I said that if Jesus was slain before the foundation of the world, we have also been chosen as a result of that before the foundation of the world. We have been saved before the foundation of the world. We were just born into this world. Look at Saul. I mean, the one that became Paul. Who wrote this? He was chosen. He said according to election, he was separated from his mother's womb. Can you imagine? He wrote to the Galatians, he said, separated for his mother's womb, you know, from his mother's womb, for the calling, for the apostleship. He said, when the time was ripe, I had to respond to the grace and the calling of God. He was a bad guy. He went his own way. Whereas he was chosen before the foundation of the world. You were chosen to be sons before the foundation of of the world. You were chosen to be rich. You might be experiencing poverty now. You might be experiencing setback now. You were chosen to be successful. You were chosen to be justified and you are justified. You were chosen to be righteous and you are righteous. You were chosen to be blameless and you are blameless. You were chosen to be rich and you are rich. You were chosen to be healthy and you are healthy. You were chosen from the foundation of the world. Glory to Jesus. You see that? Glory to God. Now, this is fantastic stuff. Now, which he made to abound towards us in all wisdom and prudence. Oh, this is an election of grace. Having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to, the good play, to his good player, which he proposed in himself. is his good player. The mystery of his will is the mystery, the revelation of his purpose. The mystery of his will. He said, he made known to us the mystery of his will, the, re, the, 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 the revelation of his purpose. That is, it's for our salvation, which is the grace by the election of grace. According to his good prayer, he pleased the Lord that we should be saved. He pleased the Lord that we should be guiltless. He pleased the Lord that we should be healthy. He pleased the Lord that we should be blessed which he proposed in himself. It was him that proposed in himself. We didn't propose in ourselves to be, we didn't even have strength to be saved. We had our free, it, was, it didn't force us. He chose us. There is difference between the two. Because some people, you know, they put uh, predestination and then they put um, 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 free will by the side, that it looks like, oh, it's like it, it, it forced us. No, it didn't force us. He chose us. Didn't you see Saul was killing people? He was, was a persecutor. He was a reviler. He was a killer. But when the time was right, he responded to the gospel. He responded to the calling. He responded to that which God had proposed. So that means, regardless of what you are going through now, even now that you are born again, regardless of what you are going through, I see your finances responding to God's purpose. I see your marriage responding to God's purpose. Your marital responding to God's purpose. Your business, everything responding. Your study responding to God's purpose. We just need to surrender ourselves. You know, Paul was met with a serious encounter. Bah! He encountered the law. He saw the light. And when God says, you persecute me, he said, who are you, Lord? He said, I'm Jesus whom you persecute. Then God spoke to him, and he got converted, and he was filled with the Spirit. Glory to Jesus. We just need to submit to him at every junction of our life, and then we see the purpose and the mystery of God's calling on our life coming to reality. He said, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on the earth in him. Glory to Jesus. In him also we have obtained an inheritance. Not just salvation. We have also obtained an inheritance. Not just holiness. We have obtained an inheritance. Being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. That we should first trusted in Christ. 
that we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Now, um, I, I don't have all the time with me again, but then let me quickly rush to Ephesians chapter 3. Now, this is going to throw more light on it. Okay? Now, look at what it says. For this reason, I, Paul, I, I, Paul, I'm, writing, I'm reading from verse 1 now. I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ, Jesus, for you Gentiles, if indeed you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which was given to me for you, how that by revelation he made known to me the mystery, as I have briefly written already, by which when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was, made, was not made known to the sons of men, as it has now been revealed by the Spirit to his holy apostles and, and prophets." All right? That was in the Old Testament. All right? But now in the New Testament, it's been revealed that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ through the gospel. So what he's saying is that, look, this is a New Testament, Testament dimension that even the Gentiles, that means the non-Jewish community, the non-Jewish nation, should also be part of Christ, should be in him. All right? She also accepts the salvation and the blessing of God. Verse 7, he said, Of which I became a minister according to the gift of the grace of God, given to me by the effective working of his power. To me, who I am less than the least of all the saints. Can you see that? I am less than the least of all the saints. This grace was given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God, who created all things through Jesus Christ. I want you to actually know, the Bible says that everything that was made was made by Christ, he is the word. From the beginning. The Bible says in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God. And the word was with God and the word was God. Everything that was made was made by him. There was nothing that was made that was made without him. You see that? And the word in the word is life. And the life became the light of man. You see that? In verse 14 he said, this word became flesh and dwell among us. Now look at what Paul is saying here. You know, connecting it with this, he said, in the beginning of ages, this fellowship of the mysteries has always been there, but it was hidden. That is, having this kind of relationship with God, flowing with God, is been always there, but it was not revealed. But now it's been revealed. All right? You see, look at it. He said, has been hidden in God who created all things through Jesus Christ. But I want you to take note of something. Bible says everything that was made was made not just by him, they were also made for him. Now, we're going to get into that because everything that was made was made, the wood, the tree, the land, the ocean, the everything you see on the earth, human beings, animals, was made by him and for him. You see that? And Bible says that in him, everything can only consist. Verse 19, verse 10, it said, to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places according to the eternal purpose which he accomplished in Christ, Jesus our Lord. So that means there was an accomplishment of the, an eternal purpose. So even Abraham came into the purpose. For God to have gone to call Abraham, there was a purpose that was already existing. So he needed Abraham to just start it. You see that? All right? So what God discussed with Abraham and the vision and the blessing and the promise he gave to Abraham, all right, was what determined the call of Moses. I mean, just take throughout the scripture. Just like the way Jesus Christ coming to the earth determines the call of John the Baptist. The same thing. Moses had to be raised in the slavery. Because God already told Abraham that I'm going to send a deliverer and they're going to be delivered and then they're going to go to possess the land, the promised land, full of milk and honey. All right? The vision of Abraham or the dream of Abraham is what determines the vision of Moses. Glory to God. So there's a purpose that God was working towards. And that purpose is eternal purpose, which, that, that, which means in Christ, everybody must come to the knowledge of the truth. 
In Christ, not the Jewish nation now, all the nations, all right? You know, God told Abraham, he said, in your seed, in you, in your seed, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Glory to God. I am blessed. Woo! Glory to God. He said, according to the eternal purpose which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through faith in him. Therefore, I ask that you do not lose heart at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. You see that? So somebody who had come into this awareness doesn't lose her. Therefore, I ask that you do not lose heart at my tribulations. We might be going through challenges, but don't lose heart. He said, for this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he will grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and granted in love may be able to comprehend all with all the saints what is the width, the length, and the, and the depth, and the height. To know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. This had been proposed before the foundation of the world. The fullness of God. All right? The infilling of the fullness of God. Knowing of the knowledge, knowledge, love of Christ that passes knowledge. Look at verse 20. He said, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. Glory to Jesus. That eternal purpose brought us into Christ. That eternal purpose brought Christ to save us. And he brought us into Christ. And he brought blessings, the fullness of Christ, into us. I want you to take note. He said, don't, don't be ashamed of what you are going through right now. He said, I am praying that you'll be strengthened in your inner man. The same I'm praying for you now that you are strengthened, that you have strength to be able to go through. Glory to Jesus. You have not received the spirit of bondage to fear, but the spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ, the spirit of adoption by whom you cry, Abba, Father. And the Bible says that he himself bear witness with our spirit that we are children of God. What have you been going through? Is it struggle with sin? You have overcome. He chose you in Christ before the foundation of the world to be blameless. Is it poverty? You have overcome. He chose you in Christ before the foundation of the world to be saved, to be rich, to be wealthy. Those things you are going through are so temporary. I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit that you receive strength in your inner manner, the understanding of this eternal purpose you have been accepted in the beloved. You are blessed. Every sin, every darkness, every devil, every evil in your life begins to fizzle out in the name of Jesus. God's purpose for you is a New Testament understanding. And you must know it. I mean, if there was no purpose, how will Saul had become Paul and converted? The ones that was putting people in prison now became the ones that was put in prison for the sake of the gospel of which he was criticizing and persecuting the Christians. So you can see how God brought a turnaround. Now, thank be unto God who has translated you into, from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light, but there are certain things you are yet to understand. Based on that eternal purpose, you need to understand the unique, the unique appointment and the blessings that he has brought you into, the plan of God for your life. And what you just need to do is to understand this and declare to yourself that you are blameless. You have been chosen from the foundation of the world. You are, I'm a peculiar person. I'm a chosen generation. I'm a royal priesthood. I'm a king. I'm a priest. All these things have, have been concluded from the foundation of the world. You must continually and emphatically declaring that into your life. It helps you to submit to his will. It helps you to receive strength in your inner man. To be able to understand and comprehend with the saints, the height, the depth, the, the length, and the, the width, all right, of the love of God that surpasses knowledge. Glory to Jesus. 
and for you to really enjoy the fullness of God so that by the time you lay hold or ask, he is able to do exceedingly abundantly more than what you ask or think according to the power that works in us. That power was given to us based on his eternal purpose. God is a God of purpose and plans. And in Epistles, we have seen it revealed. You are preferred. You are chosen. You are peculiar. You are blessed. You are guiltless. You are at rest. In the name of Jesus. That's who you are. It is well with you. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We worship you for your word. We thank you because you will establish us in the knowledge of this truth. We disconnect from every lies of the devil. We ask that we are saturated with, by the revelation of your word in the mighty name of Jesus. We are established in the knowledge of this truth. We we'll pray by the power of the Holy Ghost in the subsequent series. We are able to navigate deeper and understand that concept, that understanding, that vision, that assignment, that blessing that you have blessed our life with, which is the, your purpose, how you chose us, how you separated us, how you made us peculiar, how you preferred us, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice, you know, who wants to give unto God, offering, tithe, seed of faith, uh, you know, uh, everything you have brought to give to God. I speak grace into your life. I speak blessing into your life. I speak increase. I speak expansion. In the name of Jesus, as we have brought this offering unto him, Lord, we, be, we pray that it becomes a substance of worship unto you in the mighty name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord, we receive grace to live our life with purpose consciousness. Live our life purposefully. Thank you, everlasting Father. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. On Sunday, we're going to move it up, and it's going to be very fantastic. I want you to be there 9 a.m. in the morning on Sunday, all right? Um, your details will be shown to you on the screen, uh, mixaloud.com slash communioncc, um, talkbyoficio, or facebook.com slash talkbyoficio, and then YouTube, Communion Christian Center. You'll be so blessed, all right, uh, on Sunday. Join us again on Sunday, and on Wednesday, 6 p.m., God bless you. Thank you for... Uh, stay tuned. God bless you. On behalf of the lead pastors, Pastor and Pastor Mrs. Tokwe Awo we welcome you all, especially our first timers, with love and appreciation. This is Communion Christian Center, and we have a mandate to raise a fulfilled generation. We welcome you to join us as we together run with this vision. It is our season of dominion. We meet here every Sunday by 9 a.m. for family service and on Wednesdays by 6 p.m. for our midweek service in this same auditorium. Our general prayer and fasting for all members, stewards, leaders and pastors comes up every 1st till 7th of every month. Pastor will be sharing prayer directives with us each day via Center's WhatsApp group. Pastor's book, Virginia's Impurity, has been released. Kindly publicize the book and let's spread the gospel. It is being sold for a token for the message to spread. Get your copies and get for someone. Every dime goes as a seed to live channels for gospel of Jesus. Messages preached by the lead pastor, Pastor Tokwe Awofisayo, are available for download on the website www.communioncc.org and show you download and listen regularly. Follow us on social media on Instagram and Twitter. We are at communioncc underscore. Also follow the lead pastor on Instagram and on Facebook at Stockway Awofisayo. God bless you.